British biologist Rupert Sheldrake views the tapestry of life as being guided by morphogenetic fields that guide the formation process in nature. Picture, for example, a seed sprouting into a towering oak, guided by an organizing force beyond its genetic instructions. Since the 1920s, whispers of organizing energy fields have echoed through the halls of developmental biology. They've been called many names, including biological fields, positional fields, and morphogenetic fields, but their essence remains the same. They play a guiding role in life's unfolding design. Genes are the script, but fields are the director. Genes are magnificent, aren't they? They encode the proteins that build and sustain life, the switches that light up new developmental paths. But for Sheldrake, genes alone are not the whole story. If they were, we'd live in a world where fruit flies and humans share the same stage, indistinguishable in form. Morphogenetic fields act as the unseen director, orchestrating the cast of proteins, cell membranes, and microtubules to sculpt the diversity of life we witness. Without these fields, according to Sheldrake, biology risks drowning in a deluge of data. Genes have been mapped, proteins have been sequenced, yet the mystery of form remains unsolved. He points out that even the simplest life forms like radiolarians feature breathtaking skeletal structures. How does this happen? Surely this isn't simply the result of proteins assembling at random. In Sheldrake's theory of morphic resonance, morphogenetic fields channel their energy into precise patterns, turning chaos into elegance. The evolution of fields, the memory of species. Fields evolve just as life does. Sheldrake asks us to think of Afghan hounds and poodles, for example, as distinct forms shaped by the morphogenetic resonance of their lineage. Through a phenomenon called morphic resonance, these fields transcend time, connecting present organisms with the memory of their ancestors. This resonance doesn't just shape form, it influences behavior. Imagine rats in a Harvard study mastering a trick, for example, and their brethren in Melbourne picking it up with surprising ease. This is the power of collective memory encoded not in neurons but in the shared field of a species, rituals of resonance, beyond biology. Morphogenetic fields pulse through the fabric of societies, schools of fish, flocks of birds, and human communities alike are guided by these invisible frameworks. Our shared rituals, such as Passover meals, Holy Communion, and Thanksgiving dinners, are not mere traditions, they are acts of resonance. Through them, the past lives in the present, connecting us with ancestors who first enacted these rites. Think habits, not laws. Sheldrake proposes a universe not bound by rigid laws etched into eternity, but alive, breathing, and ever-evolving. The cosmos, from its explosive birth in the Big Bang, isn't governed by some static cosmic rulebook but dances to a rhythm that grows and changes like a melody unfolding. Through the lens of morphic resonance, we see that the so-called laws of nature are not eternal edicts, but evolving habits shaped by the patterns of the past. Think of it this way. As life moves forward, the universe remembers its own steps, like footprints left in the sands of time, guiding each new wave of creation. Nature's collective habitual memory. Just as we inherit family traditions or instinctively know how to walk, the universe inherits the habits of its own becoming. These habits, refined through natural selection, create the foundation for all evolution, not just biological but cosmic, cultural, and even mental. When an animal instinctively builds a nest or a human feels the pull of language's cadence, they're tapping into this shared memory. It's not law but rhythm, not enforcement but resonance. The more a pattern is repeated, the stronger it becomes. This is life's way of learning, adapting, and thriving. Habits, not laws, are nature's way of remembering, a living archive of all that has been, shaping all that will be, your mind's field of connection. In the theory of morphic resonance, your mind is not a fortress, walled off and contained within your skull. It's a radiant field, extending far beyond the boundaries of your body, connecting you with the world in ways you've always sensed but couldn't quite explain. Morphic fields underlie our thoughts, perceptions, and even the way we see. Have you ever felt someone staring at you, turned around, and caught their gaze? That's no coincidence. It's an experience of the subtle fields of attention in action. These fields are not confined to mysticism. They're testable, real, and backed by growing evidence. Your awareness stretches beyond you like ripples on water, influencing and being influenced by the universe around you. It's not magic. It's the science of how deeply interconnected we are. 